Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church as we get together here um, every morning, well not every morning, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We skip Wednesday, we do our Wednesday night Bible study on the study of Acts that we're doing right now, so we kind of skip Wednesday and we just kind of focus on that. <clears throat> but right now we're finishing up with uh, uh, about being humble and uh, being uh, selfish and self-centered and conceited and all those kind of things and being honest with yourself. But God expects to use this portion of the, the book that we're in, and we've been talking about what His rights to have some expectations. And so we, we're going to look about uh, being careful that we don't focus so much on ourselves. <clears throat> we talked about that yesterday. Uh, that we don't focus on ourselves, but we uh, we look at others. We took uh, look back over there in in Philippians chapter uh, three, two, rather in verse four. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So we're going to be uh, honest. We're going to be looking around and, and see what we can do for others. And then go look, getting into Romans chapter twelve, verse number three. We shared that yesterday. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly or realistically according as God has dealt every man the measure of faith. So just look at yourself and be honest with yourself. Um, sometimes we get, people have a greater abilities, you know, maybe athletics wise they're, they're more athletic. Uh, they can play basketball or baseball or whatever better than that. And they, they kind of look down on people that can't do it. Uh, maybe somebody's more uh, musically orientated rather than uh, athletic orientated, and so we sometimes have some conflict about how people look at one another. They uh, just in, in my being more popular, some people get a, a kick and get a, a boost out of being. They want to be popular. They want to be the center of attention. They want to be involved in everything, and uh, so sometimes that can cause us to get puffed up. Uh, some people have a lot. People get wealthy, have a lot of money, have a lot of, especially those that have worked hard, and there's nothing wrong with it, but they've worked hard and they've accumulated wealth and they've possessions and that, and, and they, they get kind of arrogant. Look, look what I've done. Look who I am, look what I've done. And we have a tendency to forget that uh, we we may have been out working, but God has rewarded the work. God has provided the health. God has provided the skill. God has provided everything. Uh, we have nothing on our own, so we want to be sure that we don't get all caught up in, in who I am and what I am and forget that, that God stands there and, and He has His part to play and, and He's the one that gives us the ability, the talents. He, the talents we know that uh, are things that we have, the abilities we have, and then we have the, the spiritual gifts. And those spiritual gifts that we have are gifts from God, that's what that says. It's a spiritual gift. It's given as a gift of God to be used by Him. So, and sometimes it's in, as Christians uh, that are really talented, really uh, good singers or good speakers or, or you know, good musicians, they can get kind of puffed up. And have, you know, they have that ability, and so they, they get puffed up with it. But it's a gift of God, and believe me, anything, all those things can be taken away in a heartbeat. All those things can be taken away. Anything you have on this earth can be taken away in a heartbeat. And all because when you leave this world, it's going to all be left behind. So he says over here in uh, first in James chapter one. And uh, verse 17. Let me get to my, my Bible open here. He says, uh, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from God. It's, it's all a gift from God. We. Uh, we talk about the fact that uh, sometimes we get involved with doing things for people and, and they're so thankful, you know, and they want to thank you and they, they, they're so thankful that you do something for them and they want to pat you on the back and, you know, sometimes people get awards and rewards for doing things and that uh, for other people. But the idea is what we need to be sure that what we do as a Christian doesn't point to me. He says, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And it's not for your honor, it's not for your glory, it's not for your pride, it's not for that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So Jesus makes it very clear. You were to do the good works, our light that we shine out there is the light of Christ. We want the world to see it. And the gifts that God, all those gifts that come down from our Father, He gives us these things and that light is to be reflected in a way that brings glory to God. So all these things that we look about, uh, that who I am, I, I'm nothing apart from Christ. I am just his tool, his instrument. He says, uh, first, here we go a little bit further with it. 1 Corinthians 4 7. Oh, I, didn't, I got the wrong verse copy down there. It says, For who makes you different from anyone else? Oh, what do you have that you did not receive? 
And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? So what makes you different? You know, we're all the same. We all receive, right? We all receive our gifts, our talents, and that from God. So if, if it's a gift from God, my, my possessions, uh, anything that I have, it's a gift from God. How, how can I boast? What did I do to deserve it? It's by God's grace I'm saved to start with. And that all these things He gives me, He gives me gives it to me to, to uh, use in a way that blesses Him. I can't say, well, look look what I have done. Uh, you get out and you work. And maybe you, you start off and at a low-paying job and you work your way up and you become a, a manager, business manager or something. Uh, you, you might have worked that, but God is the one to give you the health he gave you the skill, he gave you the ability to work and to get to that position and then he honored that work. It's all it's all of him. We can you can never get to the point you can say, Hey, look at me, I'm a self made man. I, I came from nothing, I had nothing, and look at me now, I'm a self made man. No, you're not a self made man, you're not a self made woman. And God allowed you to do that. If you have the health and the strength to do those things. If you have the talents and abilities to do things, to, to accomplish things, it's all because God has blessed you and given you that ability, given you that opportunity, and given you that physical ability to do it. So no matter what we have, uh, it all belongs to Him. And that this in the study here, I, I highlighted this, and I just want to close with this. He says this, no person is perfect in any area, okay? Nobody, that word perfect, nobody, nobody's complete in any area. No matter what area of life you're in, no matter what you're doing, he said, this is the truth. We all age. Not very truth to that. We all deteriorate and we recognize that. We decay and eventually we move aside for others, no matter what our abilities and contributions. Therefore, we have no reason to think too highly of ourselves. Just, I know I know people that get into jobs and uh, positions and that, and they think, what would the company or what would they ever do without me? What would the church ever do without me? What would the company do without me? What would the family? Listen, when you talk about those kind of positions and those kinds and that, it's when you leave, believe it, somebody's going to take your place. Somebody's going to move in. I, I heard a uh, illustration about that one time about a, a man that was leaving his job in, the, in this company and he said what will they ever do without me and somebody said you know it's like taking a, a pool of water and you, you put your finger in the pool of water and you pull it out and how long is that hole there it's not there very long as as long as you pull your finger out it closes in and that's the way it is in life you may think that you're indispensable you may think that they can't get along without you but you're just fooling yourself so the truth is that, that uh, you're, you're just a tool of God, so we need to be humble, we need to allow Him to work through us, and most important, we need to allow all that we have and all that we do to point to Him, to point to Jesus. That's, people need to see Christ in us. The most valuable thing we have is your testimony. And so how people perceive you. And you say, well, they don't understand me. Uh, or I've heard people say this, uh, I don't care what they think. I know what my heart's like, so I don't care what, that's not right. That's not the right attitude. You must care what people think. You must be sure that you're not doing something to cause them to have a, a bad look at a Christian. Yeah, and, and sometimes people aren't fair. But as long as you're doing what's right, your, your heart, you say, my heart's right. Well, that, they can't see your heart, but they do see what you do with your hands. They do hear what you say with your mouth. And so we want to be careful that we're not leading anybody to believe something other than the truth. We want to be real for who we are. Don't be a hypocrite. Be real for who you are and allow God to use you then in a way to bring honor to Him. We want to see people come to know Jesus. The most important thing you can do is to lead anybody to Christ, whether it's by your words or by your actions. But we want them to come to know Jesus while it, before it's too late because there's a day coming. It's like we just read right here. There's, we all age, deteriorate, and decay, and eventually we move aside so others can come on in. And that, that day's coming for every one of us. Appointed unto man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. Where will you stand on Judgment Day? Will you stand before the beam of seat of Christ as a Christian to have your rewards for what you did as a Christian on earth? Or will you stand before the, big, the great white throne and be judged for your sin and can be condemned to, to separation from God forever and ever? So today is the day. You need to make that decision. You need to make that choice. Where do you want to spend eternity? That's a big choice, but this is the day. See, that's the most important decision you'll ever make. I say that time and time again, and it's true. Who you'll marry, where you go to school, what occupation you'll have, what career you have, those are all important things. <coughs> Excuse me, but the most important thing is, 
Where will you spend eternity? What will you do with Jesus? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray that we would be a light that draws others to Christ. We thank you for loving us. We pray for those that don't know Jesus. We pray this would be the day that they would repent, turn from their sin, and turn and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do in their hearts and in their lives. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> no.